Shang, uh, 15 minutes in rejoinder for you. Uh, Two minutes. If you're not going to give me just 20 minutes, I'll finish by 3.30. But we'll have, now we have, we have uh, 50 minutes. So you, Mr. <laughs> Sibyl, Mr. Ansari, and, and for 15, Five minutes. 15 right. minutes extra if necessary. That's we'll wrap up today. Only to yes. answer your lordship's query. The political party's expenditure is a part of their annual accounts, which is filed with election. Election. Then, I stand corrected, Miloz. We have the... Miloz, I stand corrected. We have the data of the political parties. Yes. We have the data. I stand corrected. Yes, Mr. Yes, Mr. Yes. Bhushan, what do you have to yes. say? Yes. So, the first argument of the solicitor was that uh, because of these amendments, <clears throat> the volume of cash which is coming to political parties, which he says are maybe black money or is likely to be black money, that has gone down. No, that's but, not his argument. But, he doesn't make a quantitative statement. His contention is that this was an effort which was made yeah. to bring into the accountable channels yeah. what was otherwise completely beyond the fold of accountability right. because so, the earlier schemes had not worked. So let me just deal with that. Firstly, my lord, it did not close the cash channel. The, the amendment has left open the cash channels. The only change that has been made is that for getting income tax uh, exemption, that 20,000 has been brought down to 2,000. That's all. Otherwise, donations up to cash donations up to 20,000 can be given to political parties and they are not required to be reported. Quite apart from the fact that actually 20,000 or 2,000 does not make any practical difference because all that the political party declares is I have received X crores as cash donations which are below 20,000. They used to say below 20,000 earlier. Now if they want to avail of income tax exemption they say it's below 2,000. So they say that we have received whatever, 100 crores, 500 crores by way of petty cash donations. Earlier petty meant below 20,000, now petty means below 2,000 if you want to avail income tax exemption. Practically it makes no difference in my respectful submission to the availability of cash to political parties or the ability of individuals to give cash to political parties, practically that 2,000, 20,000 makes no difference. Now, that will not impinge upon the validity of the scheme. Yes, yes, I know. Lord, they are saying that this whole exercise was to bring down the element of cash in the economy. They say cash is equivalent to black money. The object of the exercise was to uh, make political funding of parties to be to come more through banking channels rather than cash. This they say was the stated purpose of this whole bringing in electoral Mr. bonds. Mr. One Mr. of the stated purposes. Mr. Bhushan, there will be slight difficulty. Even if it has not happened, probably the data may support you. The cash channel may not have come down. It no, may... cash did come down. I'm not saying cash didn't come down. But the reason why it's important but to understand just, why cash Mr. came Mr. down. The three, three, four arguments on which we want direct answers. Yes. One is that the intention was to ensure that the money comes through regular banking channel. Yes. There is a KYC required. Yes. yes. Which is not there as far as payment. Cash. Cash is concerned. Yes. And also, even if it is coming through the bank accounts, yes, uh, the KYC by the second KYC at the time when the bond is purchased is a second added advantage. All right. Let's assume that that's there. Number three, their contention is that as far as payment is concerned, the person who's made the payment is concerned, the, the need to know the name of the donor is has been uh, protected, the confidentiality of the donor has been protected yes. for one, two, three, four reasons. Yes. Up, and therefore, when you are examining the reasons, you will have to take into account what was the intent behind the behind, behind the yes. enactment. Yes. And not by a counter argument, which may be, and there has always been a conflict between confidentiality and 
declaration or so so lord in both of them have their pluses yes. and minuses to answer our argument that these changes defeat the citizens right to know about who's funding the political party yes. because they introduce another anonymous source of funding now the 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 answer given by the solicitor to that is that well it had an objective now these are two conflicting things uh, they say the objective was to limit uh, black money or cash money coming to political parties or to reduce that and therefore we introduce these electoral bonds because many individuals or companies do not want to be known that they are the donors to these political parties because they fear victimization so that's the that was what the finance minister then stated that's the argument also of the solicitor that there was an objective behind this now what i'm pointing out is that if the objective was to uh, choke off cash donations cash donations have not been choked off but that is not the object at all yeah. the object as the finance minister says in that article and that's broadly an indication yes. was to add some element of transparency that's what mr jetley said that it will enhance transparency to a significant extent and we would add two two separate phrases which have been used that's the that's the point you are right the in the earlier in the earlier regime absent this it was purely cash based you had those options voluntary contributions you had electoral trust but not just that you had direct uh, check donations etc that is a cash based scheme an unaccounted scheme proceeds on anonymity yes according to you they have continued anonymity yes but they have continued that anonymity but of there is cash this, but there is one change yes. but there is one change yes. that the electoral bonds have brought whatever is contributed to the electoral bond in the form of accounted transactions within the normal banking fund now now the question so 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 that's the second limb of the argument that this reduces black money flowing into political parties because it's coming through banks ultimately whether it reduces or not to my mind is irrelevant to the validity of the scheme okay. the scheme may be wholly unsuccessful but it may still be a constitutionally valid scheme no not then then that is no response to my original submission which is that it defeats a constitutional right of citizens to know the who is funding these political parties that's a fundamental right which your lordship has recognized under 191a and uh, and if what is being argued that the object of this bringing in electoral bonds was to reduce cash and reduce black money so to say and bring in only accounted money through bank banking channels to political parties if that's the argument then i'm just pointing out that that's not entirely correct for the reason firstly you can still give cash there is no bar today which has been placed on cash all the only change that has been made is simultaneously how do you put a bar on cash it's But, a it's, it's a third economy much as you may impose a bar on cash If you, it's if, illegal. If it's you, illegal. If you, but want, you have a third economy. That's the, pro, the point, my lord. That it could easily have been done. That all receipts of political parties, at least of political parties, will have to be accounted, whether it is cash or not. All cash, also any money being received, you could have done two, either of two things. One is to say. the cash is totally prohibited you have to take through banking channels this is one option the other is even if cash even if you take cash irrespective of the amount even if it is 100 rupees 50 rupees
even the RBI, when when it dealt with this electoral bonds, when it responded to electoral bonds, they said that if your object is to uh, to make political funding go through banking channels, there are existing instruments of checks, draft, bank transfers, etc., which are available. Why are you introducing this anonymous instrument? This will allow, because as I pointed out, Lord, this is, it's not that black money cannot come in through electoral bonds, though it will come in through banking channels. The example that I had given in my initial submissions was, suppose, as has been done, that you, by under-invoicing, over-invoicing, etc., you siphon out some funds, X crores or X thousand crores, to tax haven. From there, my lord, you have a company to which you have deposited. That's all black money. It's over invoicing, under invoicing money which has been siphoned out to those tax havens. You set up a subsidiary of that foreign tax haven company in India. It's a subsidiary uh, under the FCRA changes. It was argued, my lord, FCRA is not in question here. But FCRA changes have been challenged in this very petition also, 2016, by which the uh, availability of even subsidiaries of foreign companies to donate to political parties was brought in. And whether or not your lordship decides on the validity of that or not, your lordship have to keep in mind the fact that simultaneously that route was opened up. The route of subsidiaries of foreign companies uh, uh, donating to political parties was opened up. Now, what I am pointing out is black money can still flow through electoral bonds in this way. You have converted black money and deposited it into a tax haven bank account of some company registered in a tax haven. You then transfer that money to, you set up a subsidiary in India, transfer that money to a subsidiary in India. That subsidiary company, because you have removed the limit of 7.5% also, even if it's a shell company, Mr. Bhushan, at a constitutional level, this argument won't wash. I'll tell you why. I am only responding to no, what no, was that, argued. No, that, I am not. If, if, this will not, not wash. Even argued. Formation this, of subsidiary companies. This I, I, will not wash at a constitutional level for the simple reason that the fact that they have been unable to or they did not dry all cash sources of funding of political parties is not an answer, is not a, a, there is not a ground to challenge the validity I'm of not, a scheme. I am not using that ground. I am saying that the, that the response of the government to my ground, what were my grounds, my lord? My ground was Article 19.1a defeats the rights of the citizens to know the funding of political parties. Number two, my lord, it promotes corruption because it allows, it effectively legalizes corruption because it allows any company to give anonymous kickbacks, legalized anonymous kickbacks to the parties in power. And I, I pointed out that the evidence, there is considerable evidence to show that almost all the electoral bonds have gone to ruling parties. Vast bulk to the ruling party in the center, the rest to the ruling parties in the states. And virtually all the electoral bonds that have been purchased are in 94.5% in denomination of 1 crore and the remaining in denomination of 10 lakhs, virtually nothing below that. Therefore, there is good reason to suspect. And I gave two examples also. I am not saying that your lordship should use those examples because those parties, those companies are not before us. But I gave those two examples. One company has declared officially that they gave those electoral bonds to ward off excise issues which had arisen with the government. The other company who has purchased electoral bonds worth more than 450 crores from their uh, accounts declared to SEBI has been the recipient of several mining contracts and various other favors. You already argued this, Mr. You are already rejoined her. Mining contracts, these are all auctions. Mining contracts don't... You are in the rejoinder now. Kickbacks, you participate in auctions. Don't, don't re-argue your case. I am not re-arguing. I am just pointing out that that was, that's my argument. Now, what is the government's response to that? 
So how do they answer this question that this defeats the citizen's right to information? One answer that they have given, I was coming step by step. One answer that they had given was that there was a competing interest of bringing down cash or bringing down unaccounted money into the donations and finances of political parties. I am just answering that issue. The other argument that they have made is that there is a right to privacy. That's the argument made at the end. Firstly, my lord, the right to privacy doesn't extend to companies. It's an individual human right. In even in Putta Swami, your lordship has laid down that that's an individual's human right. It's not a right of a company. So therefore, so far as those amendments which have been made to the Income Tax Act, to the Companies Act, etc., which anonymize donations by companies to political parties and remove the requirement of declaring who you have donated to or where you have spent this money, that right cannot be invoked for companies. The right of privacy cannot be invoked for companies. And even otherwise, my lord, if let's assume that there are some individuals who are giving this money, the question is, can those individuals claim a right to privacy which overrides the right to information of citizens? Even under the RTI Act, if your lordship recalls, there is an exemption for privacy. There is an exemption for personal information. But that exemption stated that only that personal information which, is, which has no bearing on public affairs and which cannot be overridden by public interest is exempted. If there is a public interest override, even that information is not exempted. So in my respectful submission, my lord, that privacy argument cannot be used to say that my right to privacy about which political party I am donating to overrides the citizen's right to information to know about who the political party is getting funded from. So that right, my lord, in a way, clearly would override even if there is a right of privacy of an individual. Of course, companies don't have that right. But even if an individual has that right, of privacy about donating what they have donated to political parties in my respectful submission that is overridden by the citizen's right to information. The other argument that was made was again on the basis of what the finance minister had said. He, <coughs> it was argued that this is to prevent victimization. Now, <coughs> firstly, as your lordship pointed out, the uh, government would certainly know or the, the party which runs the government can find out ki, look this company had purchased electoral bonds worth 100 crores we have not received anything from it therefore obviously they have given it to the opposition parties and therefore that that much information which will still allow the government to victimize that company is always available with the government, even if, even if they do not use their control over the state bank to find out which company has given electoral bonds to which party. The argument that was made was that, uh, no, no, there is an elaborate system of protecting that information. It's very simple, my lord. Obviously, when, when a person purchases an electoral bond, he gives KYC, etc., the bank would have to record that this person or this company has purchased this electoral bond and the number of the electoral bond would have to be recorded somewhere. Thereafter, my lord, when a party encashes that electoral bond, the party the number of the electoral bond which that party has encashed would have to be recorded. Otherwise, my lord, it would make it open for counterfeiting. And therefore, you have to record these two informations. <clears throat> so therefore, it's not so difficult if the government wants, State Bank of India would certainly know. 
and if the government exerts sufficient pressure on the state bank, they can come to know. Even otherwise, Pilot, the government would know as to which companies have purchased electoral bonds worth how much and that we have not got it. So one point is, of course, you've highlighted the citizens' right to know. What is the next? Right to know that the sphere of that the justification for victimization, etc., doesn't really apply. In fact, it's only the citizens who are being de deprived of this information. Each political party would know, can know, can know, and certainly the government can know. A citizen cannot, my lord, scan the. Mr. Bush, I think. Point and be joined up. And uh, yeah, then, my lord, just two two more things. Uh, the uh, there was an interim order, as your lordship saw. Yes, after the election election commission, I am respectfully saying because they are going to open electoral bonds window for this uh, state assembly elections any day now. It can be opened tomorrow. It can be opened day after. Uh, and. Again, my lord, till today, till uh, March 2022, electoral bonds that had been purchased were over 9,000 under 10,000 crores. Till today, I understand that the electoral bonds that have been purchased in this last one and a half years has been, uh, has taken the total to 13,000 crores. Now, today, if they open the electoral bonds, again, in this assembly election, again, electoral bonds will go. I am respectfully, my lord, requesting your lordship, even if your lordship does not stay the uh, issue of electoral bonds after today, at least one thing your lordship should say, that it should be made clear to the parties who are purchasing electoral bonds that these may be subject to disclosure. Because this court, court has the power under the scheme also, to uh, ask, seek information from the uh, State Bank of India. And I am requesting, my lord, that at the end of this, if your lordships hold, if your lordships agree with us that this electoral bond is unconstitutional, etc., then your lordship should disclose as to uh, which company has given to uh, which party, etc., and even if that information has to be obtained from the State Bank of India. And that's why, my lord, I'm saying that at least today, because last time it, the same thing happened in that election commission appointment case. I had an interim application. I mentioned that interim application on Thursday, on saying that there is one post vacant of the election commission. And the court is proposing. Except for the difference, uh, except for the fact that after the 12th of April 19 order, yes. when you moved a fresh IA for stay, that was for that, that particular. That stay was declined by the then. Uh, yes, yes. Judgment. Yes, that was. Mr. That Mr. was that, that, Bhushan, uh, that stay Mr. Bhushan, for that, that particular. That's why I asked. Bond. What is your? What is exactly your prayer? You asking for quashing of the? Of course, I am asking for quashing. Just, just one minute. Are you asking for quashing of the scheme, or you want that the disclosure should be made? No, I am asking for quashing of the scheme. And therefore, you had the anonymous that to answer that question. And, and in case your lordships, no, Mr. Bhushan, just yes. yes. Just one more question. Yes. The scheme has one advantage. There is a KYC at least. You will accept that there is an advantage yes. in that. No, that's all right. If the anonymity is removed, I have no problem. So therefore, you take you argue of that. I'm I'm saying I'm challenging the scheme because of the anonymity. Remove the anonymity, I have no problem with electoral bonds. I'm challenging the anonymity of the electoral bonds. So that is defeating the right to information of the citizens. So, so, so what I am saying is, in so you are basically pressing for the entire scheme to be set aside, and you are also arguing that the amendment should therefore be.
The law that applies to a candidate doesn't apply to a party. Why? What's the reason is that? What's the basis, Malad, of coming to this conclusion? These electoral bonds are meant for a political party to be in power in perpetuity because the amount of money through these means which quote unquote are legitimate will empower that party through capital to influence everything. This is the most unconstitutional, undemocratic, unfair scheme that destroys the very basic structure of our constitution, free and fair elections is the basic structure of our constitution. This scheme is neither free nor is it fair. It's not free because the cap, the, the, the industrialists cannot say no. It is not fair because in that process, the political party in power gets the maximum capital and the capital it wants, not for elections, for other purposes. That's very dangerous. Incentivizing, and I'll come to well, the other main argument. Incentivizing, I won't take more than a few minutes, well, I don't want to trouble your lordship. Incentivizing the use of banking channels. Of course, you will get this legitimate money through banking channels. In fact, that's the perfectly rational way of enriching yourself. Perfectly rational way. But that's not a justification for empowering yourself. I can understand if there was a correlation between this and the election process in which you must disclose how much you have spent, where you have spent. But that cannot be because the, 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 it is the candidate who is fighting the election, not the political party. As far as persecuting the person who has been given the money by that party to an opposite party, they will be persecuted. Well, why will they be persecuted? Well, let me tell your lordships, just, just to tell your lordships what the reality is. A big industrialist who has enormous power will give it to all political parties. And the party of the center will never, never hold it against that industrialist. Because everybody is benefited. The system enjoys this money. Enormous <laughs> capital to the party that is in the center and small little donations to the others. And everybody knows about it. It's not, it's not a secret. So there will be no retributions that why did you give it to that party? Because you've also got the maximum. Why should there be a retribution? So this whole argument that no, there'll be a retribution. Why have you given to that party? Supposing well, as I've got a hundred crores. I get a hundred crores, but the donation shows that he has given 500 crores. I know that hundred crores come to me, 400 crores they've gone somewhere else. And if well, as for the hundred crores, the, 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 the quid pro quo is four, five, six instances, well, as, then out of 400 crores, why should why should the retribution be more than just four, five, six instances? The same logic will apply. Same logic will apply. So why are you protecting those mullahs? And the most serious part, mullahs, which I said earlier, that I will never be able to go to a court of law. What you are doing is giving a protection to corrupt transactions by not putting that information in the public domain, because I will never know. So, Malas, how do I move forward? Where do I go? I can't file an FIR, because I don't know. I'll be subject to defamation. I can't go to court. 
I have under 156.3, I'll have to go to, uh, I'll, I'll have to give some data. I don't have the data. So what court order are we talking about? Don't shield the process of corruption itself by allowing this to go on. If you want to deal with corruption, the first thing to do is to quash this scale. This is the surest way for political perpetuity. Having said that, just five more minutes. Then, mothers, the respondents argue that the EBS is a matter of financial economic policy. It certainly is not. It deals with elections. Nothing to do with financial policy. In fact, the EDL, EBS and amendments on which it is based changes the very ground rules of the electoral process. The very ground rules which negates any presumption of constitutionality and on the contrary requires heightened judicial scrutiny. That's the answer to that question of financial and economic policy. Economic policy is a bearer bonds issue because that way you can bring black money into the economic system and pay tax on it. That's nothing to do with it. Two, he says, the argument that making the identity of donors and an extension of secret ballot, well, the right to vote and donating of funds are distinct. The right to vote is secret ballot. Donation of funds cannot ever be secret. Three, he says, there is no uneven playing field. I will demonstrate it to yourself. The entire field is uneven. Four, they say the respondent has distinguished ADR and PCL, PUCL on the ground that the information sought for in those cases already existed and just needed to be disclosed. In this case, Manas, the only reason the information about the identity of donors is unknown in the present case is the structural design of the system. You have structured the scheme in such a way that it's unknown. So, Manas, I really don't want to say anything more. All I can say is, Manas, and Millers, what is the public interest that is being served here? I don't understand what the public interest is. Public interest not to know, not to disclose. And who are you protecting? For what purpose are you protecting these people? You are actually protecting yourself because you know who has donated. It is self-protection, self-preservation, self-perpetuity. How can the public interest in protecting the identity of donors outweigh the public interest in the public's right to know? To be free from corruption. So politics, Mullahs, as I said, it's impossible for us to get rid of free money. Uh, Black money millers, no country in the world has got rid of it. Let's be clear on it. All your lordships can do is to tell the government, this is not the way forward. You want to deal with it, deal with it in a way that is transparent, that makes gives us the confidence that it is not for you, it is for the larger public interest. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Siddharth. Millers also, I would say, I filed rejoinder submissions already to his submission yes. bullets. A court master may just upload them. All that I have said to your lordships is dealt with that in, in okay. what 12 pages. Give a copy. So I, I'll, I'll, give, I'll give, give you a copy. I'll give you a copy because I didn't want to Mullahs, take too much time to read them. There are okay. others also. I'm deeply impressed. Okay. The core of our challenge is to the statute. Yes, me, yes, Mr. To the statutory provisions which prevent public disclosure. Mullahs, those are the statutory amendments. The scheme follows based on those amendments namely amendment to section 29c of the representations of people act and section 182 of the companies act those were the public disclosure provisions the scheme once the public disclosure comes with the scheme there is no real scheme to survive now this is to answer my lord justice khanna's question what are we challenging we are challenging those two statutory provisions because once that goes the scheme itself collapses the basis of the scheme is non-public disclosure Malaz, with that, Malaz, I would submit why do we need in rejoinder two points only. Why do we need public disclosure? Malaz, number one, Malaz, as the US Supreme Court said Malaz, in Buckley versus Valio, a political party may represent anything to the electorate. It may self-ascribe any label to itself to the electorate. 
but one of the best ways of determining what the party is about is where or who it is going to be most responsive to is where it gets its funds from if that aspect itself is removed from the public domain so a party can say x take the money from y or other interests and the public has no way of knowing so public information is necessary for voter to form its view into voting that is a substantive right to vote is an informed right to vote and therefore that information as to who has given you money to so that the voter can match what you are saying are you taking money are you a green party you are claiming to be a green party but taking money from uh, from oil interest there are n number of examples so that is one interest which is necessary second one of the question fell from the court yesterday to the government that how will you prevent quid pro quo plus quid pro quo has been used by both sides very broadly let me just try and plus uh, bifurcate it plus one would be plus policy influence or policy capture strictly not corruption second will be legislative influence or legislative capture strictly not corruption either plus the final stage would be corruption or bribery plus the only in my respectful submission the only constitutional safeguard against preventing quid pro quo is in fact public disclosure and plus one constitutional court in north plus south africa i just want to place two paras in rejoinder normally i wouldn't place paras of a judgment only two paras because exact same situation arose in plus uh, south africa and the constitutional court of south africa has said that the only way to ensure that these other things plus well, nothing can be removed in a polity is a complex space surely we can't ex express plus well, expect a perfect world but from from areas or zones of influence to movement to zone of corruption that can be prevented by public disclosure your lotches will just have page 6654 what is 6654 volume 4 volume 5 i'm sorry my 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 apologies plus the case is titled quite aptly my vote counts versus minister of justice and plus straight away para 40 at page 6653 What page does this uh, case begin? Six six. Well, six six five three is the relevant portion. Book mark number sixty six zero. Yes. This is volume four of. Volume five, my lord. Volume, volume five. Well, para forty. But the court has it. The reality is that private funders do not thoughtlessly throw their resources around. They do so for a reason and quite strategically. Some pour in their resources because the policies of a particular party or independent candidate resonate with their world outlook or ideology. Others do so hoping to influence the policy direction of those they support to advance personal or sectional interests. Money is the tool they use to secure the special favors or selfishly manipulate those who are required to serve and treat all citizens equally. Unchecked or secret private funding from all including other nations could undermine the fulfillment of constitutional obligations by political parties or independent candidates so funded and by extension our nation's rightful place. Then thereafter our freely elected representatives must thus be so free that they would be able to focus and deliver to their core constitutional mandate they cannot help build a free society if they are themselves free not free of hidden potential bondage or captivation now para 42 is important i'll read only from the third line only when there is a risk of being exposed for receiving funding from dubious characters or entities that could influence them negatively for the advancement of personal or sectoral interests would all political parties and independent candidates be constrained to steer clear of such funders and be free to honor their declared priorities and constitutional obligation and that risk would enable by a regime that compels the disclosure of information on the private funding of political players so my my respectful submission is public disclosure is the real check public disclosure is the real check and therefore from all the kind of things which happen in politics from that to moving into the zone of corruption and because in a democracy it's the public which tests the party every day plus effectively that is the biggest check plus finally a uh, argument on confidentiality was made a certain formulation of that was made on privacy plus and a comparison was made to right to vote is a secret right to vote and therefore this by extension 
you should have a secret right to fund in effect if i understood mala that was the formulation because our respectful submission is right to vote is your own exercise of franchise it's the least level of participation as a political actor in a democracy the minute your levels of participation starts increasing if i want to fund and influence the system as a whole of course i cannot be claiming privacy or confidentiality if i am holding a public office my level of confidentiality or privacy will be restricted to my family zone so malas this privacy even in respect of course corporations don't have a right to privacy it's article 21 right flows from right to life so that is out but plus even assuming natural persons who may be donating their right to privacy can certainly your right to confidentiality whichever way we frame it cannot extend to a area where they will now impact the entire political system and seek to do so secretly as a matter of right plus of course it cannot be so plus as we go up the system in terms of our political influence the proportionality doctrine will ensure that your ability to assert confidentiality or privacy as a right is reduced plus finally malad i'll just conclude by malad one quote plus thomas jefferson and malad my learned friend mr bhatia says that the best protection against victimization is full transparency malad so that just want to emphasize that and malad finally i would just like to end with a quote malad by thomas jefferson he said malad current uh, information is the currency of democracy and malad someone added to that quote saying it's its non disclosure should always be suspect i'm grateful much thank you yes mr lord shipai i apologize for being on on vc lord shipai really don't give rejoined us right? but i have no objection as an intervener not technically right but let me lord have the something to add my lord lord shipai i just wish to take 5 minutes for one of the petitioners let mr kansare uh, conclude yes mr please just yes my lord the two quotes which my learned friend mr solicitor started saying practicality requires that i contribute to political parties practicality requires these are not from the quotation because now we have the advantage of not youtube and the transcript require i contribute with a degree of confidentiality so that i am not victimized in future so this is the whole basis my lord of the scheme but my submission is my lord but we are talking of political parties we are not talking of rival groups who are collecting money and the political parties find you know fight election on the basis of their development activities maybe on freebies maybe on caste census you know but not you know that we will victimize a political person a person who does not pay us at least who is who is paying paying someone else more but you know the whole foundation is you know there is a confidentiality otherwise there will be victimization but you know with great amount of respect you know no body is coming forward to say about the rival group it will be victimized the government is trying to justify it my lord with a uh, with this contribution with confidentiality and the other justification is my lord the, my learned friend has some difficulty in using the opaqueness or my lord the anonymity he said con confidentiality very well my lord confidentiality of 100 or 1000 corporate houses would it not override the right of information of 140 people of this country my lord that is already argued no i have not what they said my lord yes the confidentiality is the key is the required confidentiality of 100 or 1000 corporate houses is required but not my submission is right of the citizens would override would override my lord overweigh the right of the donors how can you say my lord the 140 crores people's right i will not i will not take into account i'll take into account the right of the 1000 my lord or 100 my lord or 5000 corporate houses thirdly my lord the black money mr sibbal has given out i will given a chart a lot of the rbi guide a lot from the rbi source the amount of money was a lot in 18 18 lakh crore cash in 19 1718 when the scheme was introduced and today 22 23 it is 33 lakh crores a lot the details are given with the page numbers with the tabulated form in a chart to the court master a lot lot should a lot this take into account if a lot should to take that a lot the black money has not gone or cash money has not gone fourth my lord my learned friend mr uh, the mr mehta said that what was will happen is pre 2017 era and he gave the figure from lord 2004 to 2014 15 where my lord he did not name the bjp got 65% from undisclosed source presently also my chart at page 59 says in my written submission 65% is from undisclosed source presented by them the so same amount of undisclosed source remains my lord even with this scheme and finally my lord as a citizen i must say my lord that my learned friend mr mehta said this was the best solution we found 
As a citizen, my lord, the best solution would be no cash donation. My London friend says digitization has gone in our country nine times the more than Europe and US together, five times more than China. Let there be no digital, no cash transactions, my lord. It will stop. Everybody would know it. Thank you, Mr. I'm Mr. extremely Mr. grateful to your lordship, lord, and it's yes, very Mr. difficult Pasha, for him, lord. After the, four the last last word for you, Mr. Basha. Thank you, Lord. I apologize first for being not being present in person. It was because of an injury. Otherwise, I would have been there uh, before my lords in person. Lordship, just two very short points. Uh, with respect to funding uh, through, through subsidiaries by uh, foreign uh, companies, Lordship, there has been an attempt to misconstrue the scope of my lords' order segregating issues. Now, the order that had been passed by my lords in which this issue that these issues had been segregated, my lords had said that the Finance Act 2016 and the Finance Act 2018 and the amendments it brought about to the FCRA will be put, placed before a separate bench. Lordship, now what was uh, amended in 2016 and, and 2018 Finance Acts in the FCRA was the definition of foreign source to exclude uh, from a foreign source those companies which had foreign investment. However, Lordship, I wish to point out that where we are minus the electoral bond scheme even assuming those two uh, amendments to the Finance, uh, Finance Act stand, is that each foreign uh, source, whether there are four major sources through which foreign investment comes into the country lordship. One is foreign direct investment, one is foreign venture capital investment, one is foreign institutional investment, and one is external commercial borrowing. Each one of these lordships, and I have placed the regulatory guidelines and the, uh, uh, and the regulatory mechanism for each of these in my, in my uh, uh, in, in uh, volume four, along with my written submissions. So the uh, the FEMA external commercial borrowing uh, 2000 regulation 2018, the uh, uh, SEBI FPCI uh, regulations, the SEBI FII regulations, and the SEBI non debt instrument regulations, uh, uh, all of which Lordship cover ECB, which is external commercial borrowing, FII, foreign institutional investors, FPCI, foreign venture capital investors, and FDI, which is foreign direct investment. Lordship for each of these, and I, I could point out the page numbers of the regulatory mechanisms and the schemes and the regulators who are appointed, but uh, very broadly, Lordship, for FIIs, there is a complete disclosure required for the end use of the funds that come in, including which company they're investing in. That has to be placed before SEBI and the stock exchanges. Same for FV, FVCI, foreign venture capital investors, which is also SEBI regulations, where SEBI is the regulator. And the, reg and the uh, regulatory mechanism requires a full disclosure of where the funds are being uh, placed. For external commercial borrowing lordship, RBI is the regulator and the external Thank commercial you, borrowing IP. regulations require... Uh, go into this. Thank you. No, lordship, lordship, I'll, 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 I'll just finish my sentence, yeah. lordship. Give them one, yeah. one line, my lord. Lordship, if it's not for the, the, the bond scheme... Only, only one line, lord, if your lordship permits. Lordship, I'll just finish one line, lordship, and I'm done with, done with my submissions. <laughs> if not for, not if not for the election, the election commission to get the data in accordance with the order dated 12th of April 2019 for the period ending 30th of September 2023. Uh, on 12th, only one. Uh, we have heard uh, arguments on behalf of the contesting parties. Arguments are concluded, and uh, the judgment is uh, judgment is reserved. Next, on 12 April 2019, an interim direction was issued by this court to the Election Commission of India. Full stop. The Election Commission has produced uh, in a, in a sealed packet. It's uh, data pertinent, data as of the uh, data in terms of the interim order as of April 2019. Full stop. Uh, the order of this court uh, was not restricted uh, to the date on which it was pronounced. Full stop. If there was any ambiguity, comma, it was necessary for the election commission to seek a clarification from this court. Full stop. In any event, comma, we now direct that the election commission shall produce up-to-date data until 30 September 2023 in terms of the directions, interim directions, which were issued on 12 April 2019. Full stop. This exercise shall be concluded, uh, shall be carried out within a period of two weeks on or before Karlo. Uh, the uh, data in a sealed packet shall be uh, handed over to the Registrar Judicial of this court. Not only one line. 
Lordship, may I conclude uh, that thought and Lordship? I, I, I think I'm stealing in my duty if I don't say this. But I was a little perturbed when Dr. Mr. Sibal said that no, there is no possibility of eradication of black money in this country. I am not that pessimistic. But the way in which digitized payment has increased, it is significant improvement and the country should not be pessimistic. We are in the process and we will er eradicate black money. Thank you, Mr. Or she may conclude this to all the Thank you very much. Thank you very much. But one more uh, yes. suggestion. Uh, it's my suggestion. But despite my, Lord, my saying about SPI, etc., if your Lordship's conscience, my Lord, is, uh, desires to be satisfied more, your Lordships may consider RBI, which is a statutory banker's bank. There may be some administrative issues instead of SBI, because they may, may or may not have presence all over, my Lord. This is just to show my bona fides. That's clear.